Good morning, and welcome to the third session of Francis Chan's book, Crazy Love, Overwhelmed by a Relentless God. It is our jumping off point to talk about what it means to be a believing, following disciple of Jesus Christ. Thus far, the, in the introduction and the first session of the book, we were, asked, we were invited to ask ourselves two questions. One, who is God? To summarize, we explored the idea that God is the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of the whole entire universe, a very big God. Our second question was, do we want more Jesus? Do we want more Jesus? Jesus bids us to come and follow, possibly leaving a whole lot behind to go along the way with him. The question is, can we do this? Can we do this? In chapter two of the book, Francis Chan suggests that rather than living for ourselves, we should be living for Jesus and about Jesus. It is in this vein that I want to continue today. Let us open in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for your life that sustains us and your spirit that undergirds us. We give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who is our savior and Lord of all. We pray that you will open our hearts and minds during this time that we have together to hear new things and new purposes that you have for us revealed and sealed in Jesus Christ. Be with us and guide us. In Christ we pray, amen. In the, it is in this vein that I want to continue, and I want to start by reading 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. Hear now these words from the Word. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only ours, but also for the sins of the world. Know by this we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar, and in such a person the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly, in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this we may be sure that we are in him. Whoever says, I abide in him, ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you have had from the beginning, the old commandment is the word that you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new commandment that is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says I am in the light while hating a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Whoever loves a brother or sister lives in the light and in such a person, there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates another believer is in the darkness, walks in the darkness, and does not know the way to go, because the darkness has brought on blindness. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven on account of his name. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him, who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young people, because you have conquered the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young people, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, 
the desires of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desires are passing away, but those who do the will of God live forever. The word of God for the people of God. The world and its ways are passing away, but those who do the will of God live forever. Wow. Those are powerful, affirming words. They're words of hope in a God who provides a way of life. They are encouragement, words of encouragement, as, they, as the passage lays out what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And these are words of challenge, that there is another way to live. And are we willing to do it? Are we willing to do it is the question. I invite you to read this passage again this week and ponder the questions that we have, we have just looked at. Again, it's 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. The first line of the popular book, The Purpose Driven Life, is, Life is not about you. Life is not about you. These few words can stop us in our tracks as they are counterintuitive to our fallen and broken humanity's perspective that life is a self-indulgent endeavor and me, myself, and I are the focus. As the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 7.15, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. What I hate, I do. With some humor, Francis Chan has entitled today's chapter in his book, You Might Not Finish the Chapter. Pretty catchy, I say. It is not a commentary on his writing, but rather a subject, the subject of his writing. His, his title rather deals straight on with the reality that we might not finish the book or the chapter because life has no guarantee. There are no certainties of our days. There, we are frail and we are finite. He quotes a small book of James in the Bible, chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. It reads, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go and do such and such a town and spend the year doing business and making money there. Yet, you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wishes, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. I invite you to reread the passage this week and reflect on the following questions. What is James warning us against? What is he warning us against? What could be so bad? What is James calling us to do? If we were, if James were speaking directly to you, what do you think he would tell you to avoid? And finally, what would he tell you to pursue? Again, that's James chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. Indeed, James offers us some heavy words. We are but mist that vanishes. From dust we came to dust we shall return. Chan takes the bull by the horns and addresses the elephant in the room. Life is not a guarantee. It is a fragile gift from a God who loves us. In each and every moment, we are dependent on him. If life is indeed not about us, we are that we are missed and destined to just vanish. What then are we to be about? What is it all about? Where can we hang our life hat, so to speak? Presbyterian minister Frederick Beekner writes, intellectually, we all know that we will die, but we do not really know it in the sense that this knowledge becomes part of who we are. We do not really know it is, we do not really know it in the sense of living as though it were true. On the contrary, 
We tend to live as though our life will go on forever. So yes, we are finite creatures with no certainty of the length of our days. It would be easy to just close the book right there, though the way I see it, we have two options. One, give up. Just say, I'm done. Let it, let it happen. The second is to give in, to give in. To give up is a short-sighted, me-focused answer that life is all about you. It reinforces our self-centered belief that our circumstances are more than what God offers us, which leads to worry and stress in our lives rather than trust in God. To worry implies that we don't quite trust that God is big enough or powerful enough or loving enough to take care of us and what's going on in our lives. Stress on also says that things that we are involved in are self-important enough, too self-important enough to merit our impatience, our lack of grace towards others, and our tight grip on the control that we think we have. On the flip side, option two, to give in is rather to affirm our frailty and to submit ourselves to God's will and God's desires for us. It means we acknowledge our illusions of control and give them over to God who is stronger than we are and who calls us to come and follow, not to follow alone, but to follow with him. Francis Chan urges us to get over ourselves, to get over ourselves. And maybe that's what we really need to hear at the core of who we are. Maybe, just maybe, it's an invitation to dig deeper into what God desires for us, what God wants with us, and where we are being called to be. This week, I want you to ponder the following questions. If life is not about us, what is our purpose? Our purpose is to point to Jesus. To point to Jesus. It is also God's purpose for us. So the questions. List the elements in your life that keep you distracted from fulfilling God's purpose for you. What are your stumbling blocks? What's getting in the way? Second, how have good things in your life come to distract you from what is most important? Are your priorities in order? Is your house in order? What would it take to adjust your perspective to submit to Christ? To submit means to lose control, but we really just have illusions of control, but it's still scary. So what would it take in your, to get rid of your fear and to trust in God. How can you structure your life to reflect that every second you are dependent on God's grace? Every second, every moment, every day, we are dependent on God. What can you change about your life to avoid regrets? To avoid regrets in your faith and in your life. And seven, how can your life be a living testimony to the purposes of God? Be a living testimony to the purposes of God. And number eight, what is your role in growing in maturity in Jesus Christ? We have a part in this, and what is that part? Good things to ponder. I'd like to end with words from one of my favorite hymns, Take My Life and Let It Be. In the mid-1800s, Frances Ridley Havergal penned this hymn. In her own words, it is a hymn of consecration in which she commits all of who she, all of what she has and her whole being to the Lord and his purposes. It expresses that what each of us ought to feel and long for. And we sing these words in faith and hope. Take my life. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days 
Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as you choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at your feet its treasure store. Take my life and I will be ever only all for thee. Let us close in prayer. Almighty and merciful God, we give you thanks that you give us options, that we can give up or give in. I pray this day that we, we may all give in to submit to your will and your ways, for you desire life and abundance for us, and we are your messengers. You love us and gave your son's life for us. God, this week may we, we be reminded that we're never alone, that you are always with us, sustaining us, walking with us, and upholding us. We pray all of these things with thanks in our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Goodbye for now.